you may have seen my recent video about the thermal mod on my M1 MacBook Air. Well, if you haven't already watched that, I'll briefly recap it for you. By applying thermal pads to the heatsink of the M1 chip, I was able to get a 15% overall increase in performance with up to a 30% increase in render times for my videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this mod on your very own M1 MacBook Air and the equipment you will need. I do recommend doing some benchmarks before you do this mod so you can see how much performance improvement you get. Run a few Cinebench benchmarks and maybe a few renders and try it all again once you've done the mod. Now, just a quick disclaimer before we get started, there's no guarantee that this mod will or will not affect the warranty. Although you aren't technically changing anything, you're just sticking removable thermal pads onto the back of the heatsink. If something does go wrong with your Mac, Apple may not cover it under warranty. Proceed with this mod at your own risk. The other thing to note is that the back case will get very hot when you're pushing the Mac hard, such as rendering a video. I was hitting about 61 degrees Celsius after a 30 minute render in my previous video. Now 61 degrees can be quite hot for some people, so just make sure you're aware of that before going through with this mod. But if you're like me and you don't care about any of this and you're okay with it, let's get started. Okay guys, here we have the M1 MacBook Air. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what you need to do to complete this mod and also how to take the back cover off, apply the thermal pads, and then obviously reapply the back cover. Now obviously you will need some equipment and some tools for this. So as you can see here, I have some thermal pads just off Amazon. This is the 1.5 millimeter one. This is gonna be going on the top section up here because this is the thinnest and then we've got a thicker three millimeter pad and this is going to be going here which is a little bit of a recessed portion and the aim of the game is you want these pads to actually make a connection between the heatsink and the back aluminium case now i will link these things in the description below so if you are interested in doing this mod you can the other thing you're gonna need is some kind of screwdriver set. So I've got the iFixit kit here. It's a pretty decent one. So it's got pretty much everything you're gonna need, including all of the screw heads. You're only gonna need one for this mod, by the way. Uh, this video isn't sponsored by iFixit or anything like that. I just like their stuff. If you haven't got one of these, they are relatively inexpensive. Again, I'll link it in the description. Now I am also using this magnetic screw placeholder also from iFixit. You don't need this, but it's just a handy thing to have to keep the screws on. Now the screwdriver head you will need is a P5 pentalobe. Again, this is gonna be in most of the iFixit kits. And then the next thing you wanna do is you want to take out the screws that are attaching the back case to the Mac. Okay, so all of these screws have now been taken off. You might be able to see here, but some of the screws are actually different lengths. So I've put, obviously the layout of the screws here matches the back of the MacBook. So it's very easy for me to put back on when the time comes. And as you may be able to see in the camera, the top screws are longer and the bottom six screws are the shorter ones. So we'll put this to the side and we'll get started on cracking open the back. So now you obviously wanna get the back case off. Now you can use the tools from iFixit, which is the suction cup and the spudger to make this easier. So I'm just gonna be using this again. I'll link all of this stuff in the description. Okay, there we go. Now, as you can see immediately on the back, there's some black sort of material there. Now I have seen in some videos that some people actually scratch that off. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just leaving it. Um, so we'll put this to the side. And as you can see here, we have the interior of an M1 MacBook Air. So as you can see, really nice and neat looking. Uh, it's been done very, very well. 
And this is what we're actually going to be applying the thermal pads to. Now you might be able to see from this angle, see if I can lift it up a bit further, but this particular part is a little bit higher than this part, which is actually recessed. And this is what we're gonna be using the different size thermal pads for. Now the next step is to obviously cut down the thermal pads to size. This is how they will generally come. You'll get like a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter or a 10 centimeter by five centimeter long strip. Uh, this is obviously the thinner one. This is 1.5 millimeters. That's gonna go there. It's actually already pretty much a perfect size. I might just trim it on the edges a bit. And then for the three millimeter version, that's gonna go here. So obviously I'm gonna trim that down quite a bit. Doesn't need to be exact measurements. So you can probably just take a rough measurement, maybe mark it with a pen or something and then just cut. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so as you can see, I've cut down the thermal pads to size. Now it's not exact, as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap there and they're not 100% a perfect fit, but again, it doesn't really matter. You just want to have as much of this surface area covered as you can because you just wanna to try to facilitate the heat transfer up and onto the external back case. So what we'll do now is we will just peel off the adhesive on the back and we will pretty much just stick it down onto the heat sink. So as you can see there, I decided to just quickly reposition the top part. I just cut out a little section here just because this technically isn't part of the heat sink. So I wanted to cut around that. Uh, and I've also put a little strip there as well, just to sort of cover it up a little bit. Again, it's not pretty, but you just wanna make sure that the majority of this heat sink is covered and is able to make contact with the back case. So at this point, you wanna make sure obviously all the protective covering is off. And now you wanna put the back of the case back on. So you'll probably notice a little bit of resistance when you try to push this down a little bit and get the screws in. That's good, you don't want too much obviously, but a little bit is good because that means that the thermal pads are definitely making contact with the back of the case, which is what you want. So let's put the screws back in and let's go from there. And that is it. You now have a thermal mod M1 MacBook Air. The great thing about this mod is that you can reverse it at any time. Just repeat this process and peel off the thermal pads and you're back to a stock MacBook. Again, the links to the thermal pads and tools you'll need are in the description of this video. Stay tuned on my channel because I'll be doing a lot more videos on this topic, including seeing if a laptop cooling pad makes any additional difference. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. But apart from that, I will catch you guys in the next one.